Hello everyone, my name is Rosario Rogel. I am professor of sociology at the Autonomous University of the State of Mexico in Toluca. I'm really glad to be here and share with you this project that we have been working in the past two years. First of all, let me talk about how this project come about. The Weber project, the, uh, this is what we have called this website uh, that we have been created in the in collaboration with the uh, sociology undergraduate students. You can access this uh, web page through this QR code. Uh, this course was related to Max Weber theory. All those who are related with sociology know that this is a very famous theoretical work uh, with a high degree of, of abstraction. The aim was to keep up purely theoretical course, a more practical twist, allowing students to get involved in the co-learning process. Uh, 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 we propose to develop an open educational resource in a collaborative way uh, where the students themselves would, uh, would be responsible for developing the contents of the resource. Another central purpose of the course was to highlight uh, Marian Schnichter's contributions to Max Weber's theoretical proposal. She was uh, the, the Max Weber wife. Uh, Marianne was a key player in the development of Weberian theoretical propose, proposal, but her contribution had been little recognized. We therefore wanted this project to give her the recognition she deserves and has not received. And uh, how did we build this OER? Uh, I am in charge of the sociology course as a professor at the university. And uh, for the development of this project, I had the support of my colleague, Brian Rosenblum, who is a digital humanities librarian at the Kansas University and with whom I have developed other projects. And also had uh, the support of Alan Colleen, a communication graduate who is interested in digital pedagogy. He acted as connection with the students to solve doubts and support them in the development of the website. We had a goal of having the students learn some basic tools and skills for website building. Uh, uh, these are students that uh, didn't have uh, much experience with these tools, sometimes not at all. So we wanted at least to get them familiar with some of these tools. We wanted the website to be sustainable. And for us, that means easy to use and maintenance, easy to update and interactive. Uh, in other hand, we had to balance time a uh, class with time devoted to learning these technical skills and building the website. We wanted to develop these skills, but not to take too much time away from the real focus of the class, which was sociological theory. So we ended up deciding on a static web a website platform. They do not require a database or application to display the website. Uh, they are just simple static HTML files that can be stored on a any web server. Uh, they are fast and they are secure and they are easy to care for preserve uh, over the time. For the development of the website, uh, we use a very common combination of platforms and tools. GitHub, which uh, was a place to host the files, Jekyll, which is a static site generator, which uh, we use to create the files and it integrates closely uh, with GitHub, and Markdown, uh, is how most of the content was created. It is a simple markup language that is both human and machine readable. However, using these three tools has quite a bit of learning curve. So it might seem a big challenge. And the student, they started to work with these three platforms. It was not really easy, but at the end they did it and they, they did a great job. At the end, uh, what, what are the contents uh, uh, does the website offer? Um, the homepage contains a great description of uh, what is um, on the website and allow, uh, allows you to navigate through the seven projects that make up the website and that they were developed by these students uh, 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 who were organized in teams. Each team developed a project and face the use of different tools and applications. I, I needed to say that uh, all this course uh, was uh, uh, made uh, during the pandemic lockdown. And because of that, this was a bigger um, um, challenge. Uh, the first team was in charge of developing a bibliographic selection of books and articles written by Max and Marian Weber or about their theoretical proposal. The bibliography was managed in Sotero and integrated in the web page through the Bibtext 
tool. Another group was in charge of uh, developing timelines about the life of both authors and their theoretical uh, proposal. To do so, uh, they use uh, the timeline GIS uh, uh, tool. Infographics and timelines were used to explain theoretical concepts. The infographics were li licensed under Creative Commons. A another team was in charge of integrating different web resources related to Weber's theoretical proposal, videos, didactic materials, and they, and they even integrate a playlist with music from uh, 1920s uh, when Weber uh, developed this theoretical proposal. In the own words uh, of the students, uh, they say they said that this is the music you should use in the background to read. Uh, Weber. Um, and the website includes several videos uh, developed by the students where, in their own words, they explain some of the concepts of Weberian theory. This is perhaps uh, the most entertaining selection of all. At the end uh, uh, is also a credit section where we include all of the students that collaborate in the creation of this project. It was very important for us to mention them and to recognize all of the great work they did. At the end of the semester, we made a big launch of the website. As I said before, we developed this web page and this course while we were under the pandemic lock lockdown. Uh, then all the classes were, were online. At the end of the of, uh, semester, we could meet each other in person, and uh, that was really, really great. Um, in the words of students, uh, it is important to create a web page about authors to promote learning, exercise new strategies and approach new technolo te technological tools. It also serves to, to make some topics with high level of abstraction easier and more dynamic. And there are different uh, voices of them, but uh, I, I, I don't have time to, to share off. At the end, I wanted to remark some of the challenge and opportunities of this project. First of all, the students need a computer to work on most of these tools, and some of them uh, didn't have access to a computer at home, or they had a, a, to share it with other family members. Uh, and the campus was still closed because of the pandemic. So some of them couldn't use the computers at the campus. So when we were creating the project, we made sure to organize the class in different teams and that at least one person in each team have access to computers so they could upload all the contents to, to GitHub. And another challenge was that uh, we needed to keep constant communication with the students because they were experiencing issues constantly uh, while uh, uploading the content or they were still scared to, uh, to, to observe the contents and, and they will work worry uh, that they could break the website if they forgot a comma or if they push the wrong button, uh, uh, even though, of course, that wouldn't happen. Uh, because of that, we need a close uh, communication. In this case, uh, the support of a recent graduate student like, student like uh, Alan Colin, who inspired confidence in the students, was essential. And if we talk about the opportunities of these kind of projects, uh, I can say that creating an open educational resource is a, as a practical assignment for theoretical courses. Courses is a great experience, both for students and lecturers. We believe that we have to improve this part, trying to involve instructors in, in these kind of exercises. The lack of sociology and open educational resources in Spanish is a key challenge because it is needed to say that there are a lot of open educational resources, but most of them are in English and not all of uh, our students in Latin America speak English. And because of that, they are not close to this. So this uh, this is uh, this kind of resources are important for them because we think it is really important for students to develop their own resources and uh, in Spanish uh, for their own colleagues. At the end, I would like to highlight the importance of collaborative work where educators are not the only ones who create educational content and who are in charge of teaching. It is important to have the support of digital librarians, of students from different levels in areas of knowledge, from different countries and speaking different languages, but above all, playing to build and know how together we, uh, where we all learn and together we build knowledge. Thank you very much.